In this problem, we're going to solve a system of equations, and this one's only a two by two. We're gonna solve it using matrix algebra, which is a method involving the inverse of the matrix A. So first step, let's convert that system of equations into matrix form. Okay, I have a coefficient matrix right here, that's A, those are just the coefficients on the left side of the equations. And then I have the solution matrix here, B, which is just the, the answers on the right side of the equations. And once I have those, I'm just about ready to get started with this. But you see, one of the first things we ask for here is the inverse of the coefficient matrix. So we have to review how to find the inverse of that matrix. If you don't know how to find it, no problem. I'm gonna talk about this right now. If you're good with that part, if you know how to find the inverse of A, well, skip ahead two minutes, I'll show you what to do with it. So we have two options for finding the inverse of A, either row operations, which is my favorite, or using a formula that you hopefully memorize. I don't like memorizing formulas, so I, re I remember row operations. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take that matrix A, and I'm gonna put that on one side with an identity matrix I on the other. Okay, and then I'm gonna do row operations until my identity matrix is on the left instead of the right. So first thing I do is I replace row two with row two plus two R one. Okay, and that brings me down here. I'm assuming you've been over some row operations before so you see what I'm doing. Second thing I do is replace row two with row two divided by four. Okay, and that'll bring us down to this step. You see, I've almost got the identity matrix over here. I'm getting close. Last step that I do is I replace row one with row one minus five, row two. And that'll bring me down to this last step right here. Now I have an identity matrix on the left. What remains on the right is the inverse matrix right here. Now, if you do this by a formula, that's fine too. Um, the formula goes according to this. If this is your matrix, A, B, C, D are the elements, then what you do is you take one divided by the determinant of your matrix, and then you jiggle around these coefficients like so. The A and the D get switched, and the B and the C get multiplied by a negative one. Okay, and you, see, you can see I did that right here. I switched what was one and negative six to be negative six and one down the diagonal, and I multiplied these by negative numbers to get two and negative five. I, determ I divided this by four, which was the determinant that I calculated previously, and we got the exact same thing, okay? So either method works. It just comes down to preference and how you like to figure out the inverse of these matrices. Now, if someone gave you the inverse of the matrix, that would be even easier. But let's go ahead and write this guy. Uh, let me grab this guy and put him up top so we can use this. Okay, so copy that up here. Now, how are we going to use this thing? Well, let me get this thing. There we go. How are we going to use this inverse matrix? Well, we need to use matrix algebra which is why I love these problems. If I have an equation, matrix A times matrix X equals matrix B, according to matrix algebra, I can do the following. I can multiply on the left side by the inverse of A. As long as I multiply on the left side over here by the inverse of A, okay? I specify left side. It has to be the left side. If you do something like this, now that's not going to work. You can't change the order of multiplication with matrices. That makes bad things happen. It's not like numbers like 4 and 7 or something. So we're going to multiply on the left by the inverse matrix. And what happens when you do this on this side is something very nice. These just cross out. A inverse times A, that's just the identity matrix, which is just one, so we can ignore it. So here's what we get. In second step, we do get the identity matrix times x equals the inverse of a times b. Now, the identity matrix times x is just x. That's why we like the identity matrix so much. So here's my solution to the equation. If I can do the inverse of a times b, then I'm going to be in the money. I'm going to get my solutions out pretty easily. So let's take that idea. That's what we're doing. And I'm just going to put that over here, give myself some space to work. And let's go ahead and do that multiplication. So the inverse matrix is this guy, 
and I'm going to multiply it by b, which is negative 4, 2. Okay, so go ahead and do that multiplication out. This is a inverse times b. And what we get there is, now we got to work through this carefully, negative 3 halves times negative 4 plus negative 5 fourths times 2. And that's just the top row. Then I come around to the bottom row, and I get, let's see, 1 half times negative 4 and 1 quarter times 2. Sorry, I'm a little slow about this. I'm just trying to make sure I don't make any whoopsies. Now, this is all the solution matrix X. Okay, it has two rows, and I know it looks like a long column, but that, it, that really is just one column. And let's simplify this and see what we get. So negative 3 halves times negative 4 is going to be, I'll just write the numbers here. Uh, well, the negatives cancel out, so we've got 6. And this one over here is negative 5 halves. On the bottom, this is going to be, um, slow with math today, negative 2. And 1 quarter times 2 is 1 half. So now I still need to add those together. 6 minus 5 halves. Well, 6 is 12 halves. So 6 minus 5 halves is going to be 7 halves. And on the bottom row, negative 2 plus 1 half is just going to be negative 1 and a half or negative 3 halves. I should have actually brought up my answer key beforehand to see if I got this right. But let's just... Uh, Take a quick look at that, and good. Video does not need to be deleted in a rage. These are my answers, seven halves and negative three halves.